The architecture of Bucharest says a lot about how uh, Romanians are at this point. The communist buildings coexist with modern architecture or with uh, interbellic architecture. The communist regime left some important traces in every Romanian in, and in the way we think. And like we see on the buildings, people were taught that we must all be the same and we don't have to question authority and we don't have to challenge the decisions that are taken for us. But if they have the right tools, citizens can demand more accountability from decision makers and they can ask for more responsibility with regards to, to the money they pay to the state. And what we need most is funky citizens that can do their part in, uh, in fighting corruption. The average Romanian doesn't exactly know where the tax money goes. It's very complicated to look at the budget. It's like easy money to get because you have taxpayers' money, you have the taxpayers stuck in apathy, and then you have lined it up for corruption. When our young democracy was born in 99, everybody got the feeling that the Western model of transparency would also immediately happen in Romania. Unfortunately, we can't see a difference in the way the administration works for its citizens. In many Eastern European countries, the budgets are secret. You can't even find out where your tax dollars go, and that's, you know, taxation without representation, you know, non-transparent, authoritarian use of money, which goes back to the communist ideas. I used to work for Transparency International Romania for almost three years. When I first started working there, the Corruption Perce Perception Index for Romania was 3.8. Eight, and when I finished working there it was 3.6. Uh, so the situation in Romania got worse and I felt discouraged because um, I couldn't imagine how the, the normal people, the average people would feel about it uh, since I, that I was in the middle of the anti-corruption fight in Romania, couldn't do anything or much about it. During my holiday, while considering what to do next, um, I was uh, sitting one day uh, considering to buy a new pair of red shoes. I was very excited about it. And the same day I received this letter from the tax administration saying that I have to pay additional money to them. I couldn't find out why, I just went to the tax administration. It's in the middle of nowhere between apartment blocks and they all look the same because of the communist architecture. And um, it's an adventure to, to go there. There is no sidewalk. It's like an extreme sport. When I got to the tax administration building, there were so many people out there and I couldn't find out why do I need to pay extra money to, to the state. So the tax building is there. It's very small and dark and uh, there's usually a queue. It's very hard to uh, find information to pay the taxes in itself, and it's even harder to find out what happens with the, the money you're paying. In a certain way, reading a budget is like my trip to the tax administration where you're very confused and lost. Budgets in Romania are not easy to read, not even for, for an accountant, for example. It's all very complicated and there are thousands and thousands and thousands of pages of numbers and tables and so on and so forth. So I eventually paid uh, the, the extra tax and turned back, back home feeling very vulnerable because I couldn't know uh, what happened to, to the money uh, I paid. For somebody that works in good governance and all this stuff and knows how the state works, it made me feel really vulnerable to see that all that knowledge wouldn't help me understand something that was happening to me personally. Even though it sounds silly to be upset because I couldn't to afford a pair of shoes, uh, this, this made me realize that it must be hard for the average citizen 
So I thought about building this platform, which would explain in a user-friendly manner what happens with our taxes and how the state spends the, the money it gets from the citizens. So we started this organization called Funky Citizens to put forward this project called Lost Money. We got ourselves a team, IT guys, communication guys, web designers, people that knew how to wrap up something complicated to turn it into something simple for, for the user. I came to realize that it's actually the money that matters. <laughs> One day I met Elena while working for an advertising agency and then we just clicked and went on to work for this project uh, of tracking um, expenses from the state budget. Lost Money at that point was a platform when you, where you could easily visualize what happens to your tax money and how the state spends it. You go on bankerdoots.ro, you first see that you can have an overview of how the state uses your taxes and my taxes. And then, of course, you can see precisely how much you are paying. For example, if you have a salary, you just introduce it here. It will calculate exactly what happens on an annual basis. Of course, you can go and find out more for each topic. When you put that in context and when you see how much money is spent on a particular area and you still see no results in that area, you might question yourself, what happens with, with the funds dedicated for infrastructure, for example? My name is Kasmin Nitsu and I help fun the Funky Citizens with the data visualizations. Visualizing data, I think it's important because we have so much information on our hands. You have to give them the visualization that they will get in 10 seconds. If you can communicate well enough, then anybody will uh, essentially be able to understand. We built this section where the citizens can actually see what would happen if they would make different choices with the, with the budget and they have there the opportunity to choose between policy options. This helps us with advocacy work because we collect the opinions of the citizens and then use the results we got from the community to advocate for change in the way public funds are spent. <laughs> Pentru că dintr-o perspectivă de advocacy, dacă eu mă duc la decident și spun eu reprezint 100 de mii de oameni, am cojones. So what we did then and what we are currently working on and experimenting is that we focus more on local budget. And it's this what we were doing right now with the help of the ISCC team. So we decided to take lost money or Bampier Dutz to the streets. So we decided to participate to this event called Train Delivery. We're here at Train Delivery in Bucharest. Uh, that's our table where we are trying to engage the participants to this event and try to uh, talk to them about serious things in a less serious environment. We decided to invite funky citizens because they are so funky in the first place and then because they're doing something really amazing. Their actions are going to change something in the way we are um, looked at by the authorities. So they're uh, bridging this gap between, you know, the layman and those very complicated budgets. They're, they're making it simple to understand. And we invite them to either use the online simulator or to just pin on the map whatever they would like to see happening in Bucharest with their tax money. And then we said that we collect things that we have to pay for the citizens and we give them to the first deci dacă vă uitați pe harta asta, vedeți la printată sunt care sunt prioritățile, adică pe ce să duc cei mai mulți bani în bugetul din 2014, cum a hotărât primăria. Da. Dacă vă uitați, o să vedeți că diferența între ce consideră prioritar primăria 
și ce da, consideră că... Unele s-o chile, unele da. Nu. Se vrea mai lucruri diferite față de ce da. fac așa. Mai bine să zicem noi, de ce ar fi. Mulțumim! Și eu mulțumesc! Cea mai importantă idee este să arăți că cetățenii totuși sunt preocupați de buget. Da. Trebuie să fii specialist în finanță publice ca să știi că prioritățile pentru tine ca cetățean sau pentru tine ca nu știu, locuitor al orașului uh, sunt, de exemplu, educația și sănătatea sau transportul. I allocated my funds to the education, uh, restoring the old buildings. I learned that I can communicate with the municipality and this is great. When we have a look at the map, we can see that there is a gap between what the community wants and expects and what the public authorities deliver. And I think that we can help at filling this gap uh, by inviting people to be more proactive and actually do something about it. In the Romanian legislation, there is this provision in the public finance law that says that um, citizens or NGOs can ask for a public debate uh, on the budget. So what we did last year after implementing these new features on the platform on Ban Pierduți or Lost Money, um, we tried for the first time to use it. When we asked for the debate, everybody at the Ministry of Finance went crazy because they never uh, received such a request before and they knew that the law says that they have to do it and they were quite in a bizarre situation and at the Ministry of Finance everybody was wearing a suit and they were so very serious and they couldn't understand why the average citizen in Schwartz would ask for a debate on the budget. That experience made me realize that um, if they have the right tools, citizens can demand more accountability from, from the decision makers and that they can ask for more uh, responsibility with regards to, to the money they pay to the state. By empowering citizens to do a simple thing, to, to read the budget and see what happens with their tax money, we push politicians to be more accountable in the way they spend taxpayers' money. We want to see um, authorities that listen to their citizens. We want to see citizens who know their rights and use them. Basically, this is what it's all about. I don't believe that it is our duty to mobilize millions and millions of Romanians. But what I think we can do is to end impunity the corrupt politicians have. And we can do this through a core constituency of citizens that are engaged and educated about budgets. And actually what I want <laughs> is to uh, see more, uh, more and more funky citizens as, as we define them, as they define themselves, as being funky. Being funky means being a bit different and being interested in these kinds of civic issues actually makes you funky in Romania. <laughs> Well, a paradigm shift will occur in Romania when these issues become critical, salient issues in every election. And it's made huge progress just in the five years that I've been paying attention to it. And I think it stands on the cusp of becoming uh, the next hot new country in Eastern Europe. And I think it's going to bear fruit. I do believe that uh, the citizens might return back to um, a uh, space to a time uh, and to a situation where we could all be unique and we could all um, get this country forward by uh, being civically fit, by being funky citizens and by doing our jobs properly. <laughs>